everyone. Uh, let's start our lab. In this TCP uh, text uh, lab, part one, we are going to complete task one and task two. Task three and four, we will do it in our next lab. Go to its official website, download the lab setup file. Uh, please read the overview by yourself. Now we are going to bring up the lab environment. This is the environment we are going to use. Host ABC file 6, 7. The attacker has this uh, 0 0.1. This is the host mode as we learned in our last lab. You can see the container setup commands. The attacker container shared folder volumes host mode. You are very familiar with this since you have practiced in our last lab. That is a seed account. Name seed password DES. We use it to log in from one container to another attender. Use this telnet. Uh, C program file. We will use it later. At this place, open a terminal. Now let's uh, bring up the containers. So we have four. Containers victim seed attack user one user two. The name is different from the figure in the lab menu. That is fine. You can can consider this as A, this as B, this as C. It's all up to you. The important thing is the IP address file six seven. We need to open uh, three shells. First one is attacker, second one is user one, user two, victim, user one, and uh, victim. Okay, I open a three new tab. The first tab, let's say, is attacker. Second one, victim. Okay, you can see that uh, volumes, the volumes, the container shared with the machine, our virtual machine. This is 
how does a sing flat do C? Task one, sing flooding attack. We have learned the principle during the lecture, so please review these materials by yourself. Three-way hand shake. Sing flooding attack. The attack is sent the same packet to the server, and the server received the reply with the same plus SK to the attacker. However, this same packet or spoofed with a random IPs and a random uh, source port number. So this will be sent to those uh, random IPs. And we know the server side, that is a queue used to hold the uh, half open connections. These half open connections. If there is no way to get rid of those uh, have open connections, then the server will not be able to receive a normal or any new connections. The denial of service. First, we need to turn off uh, countermeasures provided by the Ubuntu system. The backlog that the queue can see its size. Here is its size. Let's go to the victim to check the uh, kernel parameters. The two hundred fifty six here is uh, one hundred twenty eight. We may change it to uh, some other numbers if you want. To find those uh, TCP connections, we can use this command net state number or TCP. You can check uh, the usage of this net state with help. You can see dash a or dash uh, n numeric don't resolve names and dash t scroll down dash t tcp dash u udp and so on. Telnet service is a service run on tcp, so we use uh, tcp. Net state Look, you see uh, there are two services currently running one is 23 we know this uh, port number 23 is telnet uh, we can use the uh, user one to telnet into this uh, victim machine here in our user one telnet to victim machine you know its IP address. We have an account seed password DES. Now you see we log into the victim. You can check this uh, ID compared with the victim machine. They are the same. Okay, now we have uh, set up a connection from the user to the victim machine. We can check it again. Now you see it says e established from 0 0.6 or user 1 with this uh, port number then on the victim machine. Okay, we have a uh, telnet connection. Established can anything else to see uh, how, how do we know it's the victim? Maybe we can 
make some note here. For example, create a text for empty file victim. Here is uh, in the home folder on the inside the home folder of the victim machine. So you put this uh, file in the home. More victim to the home folder and show the home folder you have a victim. But the home folder when we log in is uh, logging as a seed. So we still need to uh, move to the victim into the seed home folder. Okay, now you see an empty file called victim over there. Go back to our uh, user one. And check ls. Now you see victim is over there. We remotely log into a, a victim machine by telnet. And we check it here, see that uh, link is uh, established. The same cookie corner modules currently, uh, let's check it. By default is turned off. So later we need to turn it on and redo the attack. First we will attack it without this counter measure. So make sure we are inside the victim machine. There are lots of uh, kernel parameters, so that's why we need grab to only grab the parameters we are interested. See it is uh, turned off zero. If we want to turn it on, use this command. In order to uh, make this uh, command work, the command need to be uh, configured with this privileged tool. And this is done for us, otherwise we will get this error. How do you know that one is already done for us? You check this uh, doc composer file. See the attacker host mode, privilege to victim machine, privilege to the thing cookie is turned off, this kind of measure turned off. That privilege is true, so we can uh, modify this uh, kernel parameters. All these machines. Uh, privileged user one, oh, user one is not privileged, user two is not a privileged, only the victim machine and the attack machine are privileged, which means you can change these uh, kernel parameters. Okay, now I'll launch the uh, attack using Python. The same flag dot pi. We will uh, write the code in the host machine or virtual machine. A template is uh, provided for you. Don't uh, copy the code from the PDF file and paste it in your text file. You may have trouble since there are some invisible characters. the code template task one task one dot one okay we want to put it inside the one here. We know this line need to put at the beginning. Mm. 
Now the destination address is the victim. Victim IP address. The victim we know. We already know it. Dot file. And the destination port number is the service we want to attack. 23 for telnet. If you want to attack a web service, you use 80. For a secure web service, you use 443. You may find a list of TCP port numbers on Wikipedia. Now, we will keep sending out this sync packet to the flag. The sync packet. We explain this code during the lecture. Here we create a spoof the packet. This source IP is a random IP, random source port number, a sequence number, random sequence number. We need to change this uh, interface. They are all random. Here you see this uh, get random bits. The interface is an attack interface uh, interfaced to the local area network. So we need to uh, work inside the attacker. Here, the attacker. Find the interface. I have configure yeah, this is the IP address, so we know this is the interface. Yours may be different, so please choose yours. Ctrl S, save it. Okay, it's done. Now let's uh, launch this uh, attack. In the attack machine, CD volumes. Python three. Sing flat dot pi. We will check how do we know the attack is going on. Here, there are some uh, problems you can check by yourself. TCP cache issue, virtual box issue, because we use a container, so you don't need to check node B, we will check node A. Here is the TCP SK retries. If the victim didn't receive an SK packet from the client, it will try, re try to retransmit the single SK packet with so many number of times. Here, the default is file. We can have a look in the victim machine. For this file. After five times, it will remove that uh, half open connection. How fast it uh, works on this? If it uh, runs very fast, our attack will not succeed. Here you can uh, read this by yourself. It says, Python program may not be fast. It also depends on your machine. So if so, we can run many uh, instances. 
to achieve a reasonable success uh, rate. Here also the size of the queue also matters. The backlog, we want to check that backlog. Uh, the backlog uh, here, we checked here. This is 256. We may change it to a small number to increase our uh, attack success rate. Okay, it's a channel to just PD. By default, is 256. Also, we have two commands used to check how, how many sync uh, packets we, we received. And also, place a reader here, read it carefully. If we set the size to 80, its actually capacity is 60 because one fourth or 25 percent of the space or the backlog in the queue is reserved for proven destinations, which means some um, previous successful uh, connections. I want to connect once to the victim right, from user 1. So we can check that. Here, use this. Uh, uh, you may read this uh, by yourself, another kernel mitigation mechanism. It will reserve twenty five percent of the backlog used for a proved connection before the attack. I turn that into the victim before the attack. I didn't launch the attack now until now. So let's uh, inside the victim we check the history memory. Let me see there is a memory from my user 1 to this victim machine. We will clean it later. Clear it later. Currently we want to launch the attack to see whether we can succeed or not. And on the server side, that's why on the victim side, we can check how many uh, thing back we will receive that state TNA grep you may use dash i case insensitive what count count how many lines here you see currently we have zero which means uh, the victim received uh, zero uh, sync packet. Now let's uh, launch the attack in the attack machine. Okay, now it's attacking now. On the victim side, you can check 61. Now you received 61 sync uh, back. 61, 61 is roughly uh, 60. That just 75 uh, percent. Because 20 percent is uh, reserved. We can also use this one to help check. As I is the socket uh, usage state. Same. Uh, we is port. Please pay attention here. The, um, the blank space matters. That's here. Uh, uh, 62. 62. You can check the previous one. 60. So it's a uh, why the number changed because we know this victim is also. Keep removing those uh, half uh, open connections 
after trial to fail times, right? Now we want to see whether we still can tell net or not. Here I'm still inside the cell machines. And I exit close the polling post. Turn it again to see whether the service is available or not. We know our launch is a denial of service. It still works. See it? DES. It still works. Let's exit. Uh, now let's uh, stop the attack. Ctrl C, stop the attack. Ctrl C, stop it. Now on the victim machine, you can check the scene or CV, scene like we. It becomes a zero quite fast. Here one, here is a steel head. Here one. You may have a look to see. But uh, now it becomes zero. Actually, it counts this line. That one, it just counts the head line. So, actually, we need to minus one. Can I use zero? Can I use the net state to check this one? Uh, we don't have any uh, scene back with here. We can check the connection here. The telnet server is uh, listening. Okay, now let's uh, turn clean that history record. This one. IP, I already. Uh, Sign off the telnet. Make sure you sign off the telnet. Okay, now we use this IPTCP matrix flash is cleaned. Show again. Nothing. Okay, now its memory is cleaned. Launch the attack in our attack machine. Okay, it's attacking now on the server side, the victim machine side. You can check uh, information. You received lots of scene like we from random IP address and uh, random port number to this terminal service on the victim machine. We use this one to uh, grab dash i that scene. Like we, we also want to count the number of lines. Uh, 21, uh, 61, uh, 61, 61. Okay, this time let's see whether we can log in or not. Telnet is trying. Now you see the service. is uh, used up by the attacker. And we still be able to su succeed, right? And wait some time, we still be able to succeed. Why did this happen? As we know, currently this uh, attacker and uh, our user they will keep trying to connect to the victim machine. So if there is an open slot open in the backlog, then the attacker and the normal user will try or compete, compete that uh, available slot. Right? And uh, luckily our user succeed. See it? Yes, so we we wait some time and it succeeded. Now, how about if we want to launch several uh, attacks? In the menu, it says you may not succeed, or you 
your attack may not succeed, which means you'll still be able to log in at the beginning. I just wait uh, several seconds and uh, succeeded. It says it because the speed of this uh, Python is not fast enough. We may run several instances. Let's kind of see, stop it. How do we run several instances? So we can put them into background using this one. Let's put it into background. I have a job one, job two, job three, job four. You can use jobs to show they are run, running. One, three, four. Now on the victim side, see still 61. Now the user try to compete with those attacking Python programs. I succeeded. So let's uh, log in. CDS exit. It looks like maybe we need to clean the history. We succeeded uh, twice now. But it is, it's recorded, so we need to clean it. Oh, sorry, not clean, flash. Okay, now it's uh, flushed, the history is flushed. And uh, when you check, uh, the attacking is still going on. Try to log in again. It's trying. Let's see, wait uh, several seconds to see whether we can succeed or not. If we log in succeed, means that attack failed. If we fail to log in, which means that attack succeeded. Okay, here we, we still see wait, wait several, several seconds, we still be able to log in. Right, see it, D E S. So this is explained in the menu because the Python is run quite uh, slow. You can read this part and the previous stuff do it by yourself. Now, how do we uh, stop those tasks? The jobs and the attacker. You can bring all these jobs to the foreground or you just use a key followed by the job number with a person the, uh, symbol. Job one, now you see job one, you show jobs, job one terminated. Here, job two, job three, then you show it. We have only a job four is running. You can use a foreground to bring it back to foreground. Then use control C to stop it. Now, all the Python attacking is stopped. Can go back to the virtual machine to verify that. We still have 61 because we run four instances. We need to wait a moment to let the victim have time to clean all those uh, scene rack in its backlog. We know it try five times, right? It will remove for each one. Six to one. Yeah, okay, we just wait a moment and later we will come back to check it. Now what we want to do is use in uh, C. This one is already uh, provided. So we can use this one. The compiler is installed in our host machine, so you need to go to the host machine. I already opened a terminal over there. Right? The other one, here. There is GCC. Okay, we uh, created a program. If you are interested in the source code, you can uh, read it by yourself. Here's the source code of the syncflat.c, the C implementation.
Okay, now we can check its backlog again. You see the comes zero. Now let's uh, we want to sh see when the history IP metrics show. IP metrics or TCP metrics, sorry. That is a uh, memory, let's clean it. Flash. Okay, it's a uh, cleaned. Now let's launch the attack. So the thing flood. This is a C program. Here's the usage. Please provide IP and the port number. So the IP is a victim machine. Port number is a telnet service. Okay, now it's a flooding. We can go to the victim to have a look. Yeah, 61 right away. Now let's uh, turn that. The train, train, train. Uh, wait a moment. Okay, this time you see a. Uh, We cannot compete with the C version, seeing flood attacking. I keep trying. Okay, let, let's just uh, wait over there. Now, task uh, 1.3. 1.3 enable the seeing cookie kind of measure. We don't have so you see uh, we cannot succeed. Okay, can you see to stop it? Stop it. In the victim machine, there is still 61. On the attack machine, let's can you see stop it. Now, how to turn on the counter measure? Same cookie counter measures. Think we can manage to turn on is here. Is in the menu, or you can check check this part. Net IPv4 TCP sync cookies. We want to set up equals one. Don't change it here. When you change it inside this container. It's a victim machine. We use a. Uh, This control right to this uh, kernel parameter net dot IPv4 okay it's a uh, turn on In the lab man, it also asks you to uh, change the backlog to a smaller number. Currently, we change it to 80 when we use the use both C version and the Python version. It asks you to try save a different backlog length to see what happened. In territory, certainly it's longer, it's harder to attack. Right? Uh, we turn it on. We also need to see, uh, we know there is no successful connection, so which means in this memory, we have nothing. Now let's uh, launch the attack. 
you need to do uh, the Python version and the C version. Let's do the C version. The Python version, you will do it by yourself. Sync flood, sync flood. Now go to the Victor machine. We check this uh, sync directory. Is it 128? Why is the number jumped up? You can check it's a backlogger. By default, with backlog, uh, backlogger is uh, 256. Right? We can check it's a backlog. What's a backlog now? Oops, not right. We just want to check it. Okay, it's still 80. Now you see something weird happen. Right? Here is the 80, but here you can see we have 128. This is a scene back uh, with when the scene cook is turned on. So some uh, magic happen. You can read the manual to see what happened. Now, if you want to try to log in, we know the counter measure is turned on, and also you see the the scene directory number is much larger than this uh, backlog. Okay. We can log in. See it. Ds. Now you see the flooding attack failed. Seeing flood flooding attack failed. Because we turn on this counter measure. Right? We turn on this uh thin cookie here. After we turn on this counter measure that the thin flooding attacks failed. Even with the C version. Right? Here we are attacking with the C version. Certainly with the uh, Python version, it failed as well. The Python version you tried by yourself. I got exit from the internet. Can check those uh, still 128. Okay, now let's just stop it. Can you see stop it? You need to uh, complete redo task 1.1, adjust redo task 1.2. Okay, now let's uh, go, through, go to uh, task 2, TCP reset attacks on telnet connection. Here is a reason you can check this for not be for use a uh, watch box. Can have a look, but uh, in, in our case we use uh, containers, so we will not experience this one. Just as uh, extra information for you. We completed all the task one, sub tasks, now task two, TCP. Reset attacks on telnet connections. We log into Victor machine from user one. So telnet, then we have a telnet connection. Now the attacker want to break that uh, connection. The attacker can use uh, can do it uh, manually, do it uh, automatically with a sniff. So let's first do it uh, manually with a wire shock to capture the information, the packets happen between the victim machine and the uh, user one. Okay, we need to uh, sniff on this uh, Attacker's interface.
host. Let's use this uh, victim host, right? And also TCP and you may add a port number 23. 23 could be port 23, which means it could be a destination port, destination port or source port. Press enter. Now let's uh, log in the victim from user one. Here is user one. Before we log in, you can check those uh, connections. Check the connection with this uh, command. Play. Service is listening on the victim machine. And you uh, pay attention to uh, our shock login seed DES. Okay, we log in. And on the server side, you can check the connection established. So there's a victim IP port number, there's a user IP and port number. Now, on the user, you can type a command, for example, ls. Just type a letter L. You see, every letter it will be packed into a package and send it to the server. Okay, for the last one here, we are interested in the last one because we want to use the sequence number as we discussed during the lecture. Here, sequence number, next sequence number, acknowledge number, source port, destination port. We know the reset packet can be sent uh, from user to the victim or from victim to the user. Here, let's uh, try from the user to the victim, which means the users, we as the attacker, we impersonate the user to send a reset packet to the server to close the connection. The code is provided in the template. The template task two point one. This line put at the beginning. Okay, now we need the information from the wire shock. Here, the reset packet is uh, we impersonate the user. Not the server, so which means the source number is the user source IP destination port 23 Oh, sorry, this is not this is the destination IP address, source IP, destination IP. 
the IP is the victim port number source port number is here 49634 yours may be different so please uh, use your very shock information destination 23 sequence number the next sequence number Next sequence number. Okay, that's it. Contrast because we send from the attacker, right? so the so interface we need to change it to the to the attacker's interface here. Okay, there's a code you need to find your sequence number and your source point number now from the attacker we launch the attack don't attack anything in the client machine the user machine otherwise the, the, the sequence number will move so on the attack machine, we launch the reset attack and pay attention to the packet who we are capture in this uh, shock. I also print out the field of this uh, packet, the spoofed packet. Do you see? This one, a reset packet from the source to this destination, port number, sequence number. Okay, we also captured the reset packet, the spool reset packet. Now, we want to check the connection is uh, broken. On the victim machine, do you see it? That is established uh, connection is gone. On the client machine, we are still have this interface. But if you want to type a command, yes, and you see it says connection closed by foreign host. Actually, the connection is uh, the reset packet is sent from the user impersonated by the attacker you can also spoof a packet reset packet send it to the user by impersonating the victim okay now now let's stop this one now you see there is a restriction for this attack right it only succeed when the user didn't type anything and we get that number to uh, spoof and reset packet but in the real world the user type uh, commands or anything randomly we don't have the right time to launch to get the information launch the attack so next we want to launch the attack automatically launch the attack automatically here in the manner it said optional but in our lab they are all required so this is required not required please pay attention they are all required not optional now for this one launch the attack automatically we need a template code 
check the attack, check the lecture code. The lecture code is provided by seed group. I just make a backup here. Reset order for pi. Control C copy it. And we press here. The reference you can also use a uh, matbox to do the attack, as we explained during the lecture. Now we want to spoof the packs passing back and forth between the user and the victim. So the destination. We just use the packet we captured to use its uh, IP address. Pay attention to this one. You see the destination we will use its uh, captured package source because we want to reply or reset every packet we sniffed. We send a reset packet as a reply to the packet we sniffed. That's why we switch the source and the destination of that IP address. Also, the port number here, source port number and destination port number, they also switched. Here, flag or reset. This is the most important part. The sequence number we use the acknowledge number in the reply packet. You can find the information online for explanation why this uh, acknowledge number can be used as a sequence number, and uh, we must use this one as a sequence number for this uh, reply reset packet. Here you can print out. Uh, Bring out the attack, or we can uh, ls to list out the spoof packet we spoofed. The field uh, TCP, uh, here we can we use this end. Last time we use uh, we use uh, this one. Right? Later, I checked the BPF uh, manual. Both uh, worked. TCP port 23. The interface, we need to change it. Your interface ID is very likely different from mine, so please check yours. Okay, saving. Now, let's uh, launch the attack. But before we launch the attack, we set up the connection. Here is the user this is a victim machine, this is a attacker. Have that on the dot pi. First, let's tear net into the server, the victim machine. Seed DES. And here on the server side, the connection established. Now let's launch the pack. 
Python 3. Okay, it's a sniffing now. Because currently we didn't type anything, right? You can type something in the in the uh, user side LS. Now you see I just type an error. The connection closed by the following host right away. Because when I type this error, this error is a package with a TCP packet and sent to the victim. And that packet is uh, sniffed by the attacker. And the attacker then spoofed a reset packet and sent it to the. Let's keep printing. So, what happened? You keep printing. I type Ctrl C to stop it. So why it uh, keep printing? Which means it uh, keep uh, capturing packets right here, but we only capture those that uh, is being put on potentially. Why it uh, keep printing? So why it keep printing? You check this uh, port number. Time three. Right. Anyone can tell me why it uh, keep printing? Here you can also see a lot of reset. On this one, you will get your answer. Five, five, six, five, six, six, five. The reason is when we uh, send a spoof package, that spoof package also satisfy this. Uh, Criteria, right? The spoof package, the source port number is also 23 and it also TCP. So, which means it also sniffed that spoofed packet, then spoofed another uh, packet based on that spoofed packet. So, it uh, form a loop. That's why we here we need to keep uh, printing out, and you can see they are here. You can see the information from this uh, place but also there are some things like fail fail six fail six six sometimes you have only one fail sometimes you have two fails right? sometimes you have two fail consecutive so you can uh, check this interesting thing uh, by yourself. Okay, stop it. Now you see uh, the attack succeeded. We stop the uh, attacking. Now let's clean up the lab. Uh, control D, Control D, Control D, Control D. Oops. D. Okay, from here we run DC down. Stopping the containers and remove those containers. Through this way, we will have a clean environment for our next lab. Please use DC down instead of Ctrl C from this side. Now we can connect it to exit. Or oh, this terminal window. And the lab is done.